Why don't you watch where you're going? Sorry, Governor. No harm. Go along. Tell you when he'd be coming back, Doctor. Uh, well, I expect he'll be back about nine o'clock, Mrs. Hudson. It's just striking nine now, Dr. Watson. I have a beautiful roast beef in the oven, and I don't want it to burn. Uh, well, I'm sure it'll be delicious whatever time you have it, Mrs. Hudson. I'm worried about Mr. Holmes. I fear he's gravely neglecting his uh, health. Yes, oh, I quite agree. He keeps working so very hard, and he eats next to nothing. Maybe it would be wise for him to see a doctor. Oh, I think he's had enough of doctors with me as his fellow lodger. A doctor like you deserves more obedient patience. A housekeeper like you, Mrs. Hudson, deserves masters who can appreciate her cooking. Fortunately, sir, you appreciate it, don't you? I certainly do, if that's any consolation to you. <laughs> help! Help! What was that? Help! orders that nobody should come in the house in his absence. I can't help that. Get some water. Now, now, where's my bag? It's down in your car. Oh, so it is.
Where is he? In the bed. In the bed. clear that under no circumstances whatsoever was anybody to be allowed in here without my express permission. But you looked as though you were dying. There'll be no exceptions made, Watson. Oh, good heavens, my roast! Now, where's the shipping column? Shipping column? Mm -hmm. Now, what are you doing? I'm looking for the liner movements. Liner movements? Huh. Here we are. Face. Just docked. Karachi, Suez, Benghazi. What comes from Benghazi, Watson? Arabs. There were no Arabs on board. Oh. A new case, Holmes. An old friend of ours has been going to the docks recently and waiting about for all the ships coming from Benghazi. Oh, an old friend? Who? Moriarty. And I intend to find out why. But Holmes, we all know that Moriarty is the greatest criminal in the country. Why don't the police do something about him? Take care, Watson. If it should ever come to the professor's ear that you call him a criminal, you may very well find yourself sued for slander. Oh, but we all know. Knowing and proving something are two very different matters, Watson, as I need hardly remind you. It's my duty to bring him to justice. But how do you propose to do that? With the help of the Times. Everything I could possibly require to know is in the Times. It is the best informed and most reliable newspaper in the world. Oh, yes. The most reliable. Now, Watson, what is the purpose of the Times? Why to supply information. Exactly. Also to advertise. That's why the advertisements are on the front page. None of this nonsense about sensational headlines to whet the reader's appetites. And then after the advertisements, what is the next most important thing? Oh, the sports page. Brilliant, Watson. The weather, the arts, the news, shipping news, and finally, Yes, finally, politics. The Times is also the least obvious and the most efficient weapon that a man could possibly have. Now, pick up that dagger. The dagger? Yes, go on, pick it up. All right, and now what am I supposed to do? Try and hit me. Hit you? Holmes, you feeling yourself today? Oh, come along, Watson. There's nothing to worry about. You won't hurt me. Come along. No, I can't. Oh, really, ah, really? Very well, then. Try it from over there. Now, here. Come on. Nothing to worry about, old man. Uh, no, I'll tear your dressing gown, you know. Watson, for the last time. Here. On guard. All right, if you insist. Help! Don't move, Watson. Better keep the dinner warm, Mrs. Hudson. Watson, get the morphine, quick. <gasps> Mrs. Hudson, be good enough to telephone Scotland Yard as quickly as you can. Ask for Inspector Cooper and tell him I want him here immediately. Of course, Mr. Holmes, immediately. Jenkins, who did this? Who did this to you?
this time you're going too far, Mr. Holmes. How am I going too far, Inspector? I find a man stabbed to death on my doorstep, so quite naturally I sent for you. Oh, we know all about this Jenkins. He served at least 12 sentences in prison. I have no sympathy with informers. He may not have been a particularly respectable member of the community, Inspector, but he was of considerable help to us, and I trusted him. Indeed, I'm sure you did, Holmes, but what's particularly interesting is that your private investigation has now been fatal to him. That's a very serious accusation. Are you by any chance proposing to arrest me on a charge of murder? Scotland Yard has often requested your help, as you know, Mr. Holmes. However, this time no request has been made. Under no circumstances can we sanction your undertaking private investigations without having received official authorization. I'm not employed by Scotland Yard, Inspector. I'm a private citizen. I do what I believe to be right, and I'm prepared to accept all responsibility for it. This country has a police force and a legal system for its citizens' protection, and nobody has the right to take the law into his own hands, Holmes. You can only step in after a crime has been committed. I, on the other hand, do my very best to prevent it before it takes place. Hmm, you just proved how capable you are. We're fighting a war with Moriarty, and I propose to continue it, with or without the sanction of Scotland Yard. We would be more than pleased to cooperate, Holmes, if you would only inform us of your activities. That's precisely what I'm doing. Professor Moriarty must be brought to justice. <laughs> Here we go again, Holmes, huh? You know, the last time you lectured me about that uh, professor of yours, I finally decided I ought to pay him a personal visit. We had a most interesting conversation. About his criminal activities? No, about archaeology. Uh-huh. So you're an archaeologist, too. Mm -hmm. I confess I didn't understand a word, but the professor is an excellent lecturer. Have you been in his house? Yes. It's extraordinary. Magnificent things in it. Do you ever stop to ask yourself how he can afford all that on the salary of a university professor? Mm, he comes from a wealthy family. The professor's brother is a station master in the West Country. When he himself came to London, he didn't have a penny in his pocket, and yet he manages to spend at least 10,000 pounds a year. Where do you suppose it comes from, Inspector? <laughs> from forgery, robbery, and burglary. And murder. And I intend to prove it. I think it might interest you to learn that Professor Moriarty happens to be on the list this year of those to be knighted. Would you accuse Sir James Moriarty of murder, Mr. Holmes? It would give me the very greatest pleasure, Inspector, to see the knight hanged. Take my warning, Holmes. You do not stand for the law. We do. You're welcome to do so, Inspector. Good day. Good day. Cooper isn't really a bad detective, Watson. Just lacks imagination. Why do you suppose Jenkins was killed while he was coming here? He was bringing me some information. It must have been pretty important information if somebody was prepared to kill him over it. It was. He tried to tell me something before he died. Uh, yes. His last word was hair, wasn't it? Yes, it was. But then he did something strange with his hand. I've got it. Watson, come around here. Pick up the lamp, turn it round, so that the light shines on my hands. That's it. Now look at the wall. Look at the shadow. What's that make you think of? A bird. Go on. What kind of a bird? Well, a pretty large. You're getting warm. An eagle. That's it. A hare and an eagle. A hare and an eagle. And what does that remind you of, Watson? A public house. Brilliant, my dear fellow. Positively brilliant. George, when does your ship leave again? Let's sit here, Watson. Huh? Oh. What are we supposed to do now that we're here? Patience, Watson, patience. Well, I suppose we can have a drink or something. Oh, yes, very well. Yes, gentlemen? Two half pints of bitter, please. Uh, well, I wonder why Jenkins sent us here. That's what we're here to find out, my boy. Uh, uh, strange atmosphere in this place, you know. Mm. Do you have pints of bitter? Are those uh, men over there, those sailors from the Thasia. If I remember correctly, our professor is more than interested in the Thasia. Oh, you mean the ship from Benghazi? Precisely. Which room are they in? Number four.
stay here, Watson. Uh, wait a minute. I, I say. Well, then he said he had to bring his mother along, too, and after all. <laughs> <laughs> Well, hello there, sweetheart. Hello. How about a little drink? Do, do I know you? No, handsome, not yet, but we can fix that in a hurry. Uh, yes, I'm quite sure. <laughs> what do you drink? I'm partial to champagne. It puts me in the mood. Well, you, you have what you wish. Yes, order anything you wish. You know, handsome, you're a real gent. I absolutely adore men who are shy, especially at your age. Oh, I'm, I'm a married man, you know. Oh? All of the real men are already married, dearie. The ones who aren't are always the ones that nobody wants around. <laughs> Champagne. Champagne. My mother started giving it to me in my bottle. Oh, your mother must have been a very lively lady. <laughs> I feel like confiding in you. Hmm? My mother's in the hospital. <laughs> they tell me she needs an operation. Maybe you could help me. Certainly, I could. You really mean it? Of course. Oh. I'm a doctor. Oh. I'll operate on her for nothing. And I'll cut you up, too, if you like. <laughs> <laughs> my goodness, you're a doctor. What are you doing in here? Me? Mm-hmm. I am a spy. I watch people, and I follow people, and I listen at keyholes. Come along, Watson, come along. Oh, hello. Uh, I, I was just, uh, 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 where are we going? We're going to listen at a chimney. What did you say? We're going to listen at a chimney. Quite logical, surely. Oh, yes, 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 of course. We're going to listen to the chimney. I hope you're satisfied with your room, Samuel. Yes, it's quite comfortable. In comparison to the one I spent the last six years in, that is. I've been waiting for you for a week. If I had my way, I would have come back to London over six years ago, Professor. It's no fun being cooped up in prison in Egypt. With pure misery. There were six long years. From morning to night, they keep you working on road construction. In the sweltering heat. Where is Harrison? Dead, Professor. Ah, but wasn't he on the face here? Naturally. One evening he tried to push me overboard, but he slipped in the deck and fell overboard himself. You must have given him a little assistance. Yes, of course. After all, I was only defending myself. It was my life or his. <laughs> He's no life. <laughs> Let the fish happen. <laughs> Well, well, poor old Harrison. Hmm. Samuels, I've located the man we're looking for. The man we're looking for? Where is he? Just one moment. First, we have things to discuss. for you. Not bad, Professor. When you consider what the Cleopatra necklace is going to break. I think you're forgetting what it cost me to arrange for your release from that chain gang. The price I paid were those six years. But I suppose I have no choice. All right, what are the plans? We must get rid of Blackburn first, and then you do your job. Have you any idea what you're asking? Where is Blackburn? In a house outside of London. It's not far.
Watson, you had your little joke. Now come along. <laughs> I doubt it. Well, Holmes, never take a clumsy old doctor along with you. I got all the information I require, Watson. Blackburn, Thacia. Well, up to now, there's been one murder. No, two. One of the sailors on board the Thacia was stabbed to death and thrown overboard. Uh, how do you know that? Don't you ever read the Times, Watson? I've often advised you to do so when you want to know anything. Moriarty was after a man named Blackburn who lives in the country. He sent for two men from Africa and one of them killed the other one. The question is, what is he after? Well, hadn't we better turn the whole case over to Scotland Yard? What case? The Jenkins case, they know all about that one. The Blackburn case, which hasn't even happened yet. And the Moriarty case, which they refuse to believe. Let's go. Where are we going? to the offices of the Times. Here's your breakfast. Oh, sorry, Mrs. Hudson, but we'll be back for lunch. Thank you. Uh, just what are you looking for? We have to find out when Moriarty was in Egypt, Watson. Ah. Oh, miss. Would you please bring me volume 105? One moment, I'll get it. Thank you. We shall soon know. Holmes, couldn't you be a, just a little less mysterious? You know my methods, Watson. Here you are. Thank you. August, hmm? September. Shh. Now then. Ah, this is it. Here we are. Here. Huh? Discovery of Cleopatra's tomb. World experts in consultation. In El Fayum, a group of English and Egyptian archaeologists have discovered a tomb containing treasure. The tomb is believed to be that of Cleopatra. Professor Moriarty, eminent English archaeologist, etc. Et yes, go on. Well, go on, Holmes. Just a moment, Watson. Uh -huh. Thefts of priceless treasure. Following the reported theft of priceless treasures from the tomb, two English engineers named Harrison and Samuels have been arrested. A third, Peter Blackburn, has disappeared at the same time as a casket of gold and precious stones containing a golden necklace which belonged to Cleopatra herself. Watson, we have to prevent another murder. Holmes, I just don't know what you're talking about. There isn't a moment to be lost, man. Uh, where are we going now? To a delightful little Hertfordshire village by the name of Barnet. A Hertfordshire village? Peter's gun. He's hunting again. He should be stopped. If we don't stop him, we're letting a madman run wild. He's as sane as we are. And why doesn't he call the police if his life's threatened? Threatened by whom? Why doesn't he tell us? I have no idea. Why don't you let me take you away? He's my husband. I can't just run away as if I were free. No, but there's another way out. You don't owe Peter anything. His fears have killed his love for you, and besides, he's dangerous. I'd never forgive myself if anything happened to you. What are we to do? He got away. Uh -oh. Peter, why don't you confide in us? 
You've got to tell us what you're afraid of. If you don't, we can't possibly help. How often must I tell you my life is in danger? Why won't you or the police believe it? You're seeing ghosts. Ghosts? Ghosts that hide behind bushes and then drive away in cars? Oh, but we do believe you. We do, Peter. You need help, Peter. Not only from the police. Uh, yes, uh, you, you mean a doctor, of course. Don't think that you're fooling me. I know exactly what you both would like. You're trying to find a way to get rid of me. I can't go on like this any longer. We seem to be living in a trap. What and who are you afraid of? We hide away here in this terrible old house, but what are we hiding from? Won't you tell us what you're afraid of once and for all? How can we help you if you have no confidence in either of us? I am your wife, not your enemy. Don't you trust even me? No. I trust nobody on this earth. Nobody. It's no use. What are we to do? Don't worry, Ellen. Leave it to me. Good night, Emily. Good night. Good night, Emily. Uh, miss, Hartley Hall is in the locality, I believe. Yes, sir. It's down the street and straight ahead. Uh -huh. You're not thinking of buying it, are you? It's been sold for quite some time. <laughs> We're not buyers. Uh, Mr. Blackburn still lives there. Yes, sir. Oh, I wonder if you could tell us the name of the local police inspector. Inspector French. Inspector French. That's right. Would you be good enough to telephone him? Tell him Mr. Sherlock Holmes would like to see him here immediately. It's a matter of the greatest importance. Mr. Holmes? Oh, uh, yes. You are Inspector French? That's right. Ah, delighted to meet you. How did you do? Dr. Watts, would you care to sit down and join us in a beer? With pleasure. Another beer, please, miss. Straight away. Now, what can I do for you, Mr. Holmes? Mr. Blackburn is a tenant of Hartley Hall, is he not? He is. Am I right in assuming that he's in constant fear for his life? 
As a matter of fact, he's in contact with the police at least once every month. Indeed. In that case, I think we should get up to Hartley Hall immediately. You mean right now? Right now, Inspector. Hello? Just a minute. For you, Inspector. For me? Ah, yes. Thanks, Emily. French speaking. Yes, naturally. I'll be there right away. Peter Blackburn is dead. His head is completely shattered. Shot at close range, don't you know? We'll leave everything as we've found it until the police from Scotland Yard come. Inspector Cooper telephoned to say that he'd be right along. By all means, let us leave everything to Inspector Cooper. Where were you when Mr. Blackburn met his death? I was in my room. I was doing some reading before turning in. Then I heard a shot and I ran downstairs. Was the door open? No. Uh-huh. Uh, the murderer broke into the French window. He stuck a bit of fly paper on the pane so the piece of glass wouldn't make any noise. It's unquestionably a professional job. What did you find when you went to the room, Mr. King? That. Did you see anyone running away? No, I didn't. Where was Mrs. Blackburn? Up in her room. I told her to stay there because I didn't want her to see this. Do you think he committed suicide? Well, that pane of glass was pushed in from the outside. There are traces of blood here. The murderer must have stepped in it. And that leaves no doubt whatsoever. Mr. Blackburn surprised a burglar and was killed. The culprit then ran away, leaving the murder weapon behind. <laughs> Scotland Yard will surely make the same deduction. It's not quite as simple as that, Inspector. Peter was rehanging that picture over the fireplace yesterday. That's why the hammer was here. Why did the intruder leave this ring? It appears to be of value. I guess he was frightened and overlooked it. Where is Mrs. Blackburn now? If she's upstairs. She's terribly upset, naturally. No doubt Inspector Cooper will take her statement. But why did the killer take Blackburn's wedding ring? Maybe he didn't wear one. Oh, that's right. I can't remember Peter wearing a wedding ring. No. Then I suggest we send for the butler. Ask the butler to come here. Oh, there you are. Do you recall whether Mr. Blackburn wore his wedding ring above or below the serpent ring? Hmm? Below the serpent ring, sir. You're quite sure? I would swear to it. We shall see what the inspector makes of that. Watson, I seem to remember some very interesting trees in the garden. I'd rather like to take a closer look at them. What about you? Oh, yes. Uh, yes. If you're looking for trees, they're right in front of you. That will be Scotland Yard. Yes, Inspector Cooper, no doubt. Don't you want to see him? No, not yet. What do you suppose that is? It looks remarkably like a grave. Grave? Yes. That's not large enough to bury a dog in. Be careful, Watson. Don't spoil the footprints. Leave that to the inspector. What could possibly be buried there? Clothes. Very old clothes. Old clothes? He must have tried to defend himself with the hammer. Precisely, inspector. Faultless deduction. Ah, so you knew about this murder too, Mr. Holmes? Knew? No. But I suspected that it would occur. Were you acquainted with the deceased? I was not. I heard him mentioned for the first time quite recently. By whom? By a distinguished archaeologist whose name is Moriarty. Ah, so you naturally assume that he's the murderer. I'm afraid it's not quite as simple as all that, Inspector. The gentleman in question has a perfect alibi. Professor Moriarty, the famous archaeologist, will deliver a lecture on Egyptian antiquities at 8 o'clock tonight at the Penn Club. And Blackburn was killed between 9 and 10 o'clock. Correct. So it cannot possibly be Moriarty. The lecture is over at 11. Well, we know that Blackburn was murdered before 11. Have you any brilliant ideas? I never deliver a theory, Inspector, without all the facts at my disposal. 
Mrs. Blackburn, you say that your husband feared for his life. Is that correct? Do you happen to know whom he feared? I don't. May I take the liberty of asking you a personal question? Yes. Were you happily married? You have no right to ask such a question, Inspector. I was speaking to Mrs. Blackburn. May I have your answer? I loved my husband. Where are you going? He's run after somebody out there. I, I saw him too. Oh. Have patience, Ellen. Oh, why didn't Peter confide in us? Looks as if his ghosts were real after all. Watson nearly caught me. It's ridiculous to search any more in the dark. Inspector, will you please alert the police throughout this district and that of St. Albans to block all the roads and put a guard at the railway stations? Would you please give me your right shoe, Mr. King? Why? Your right shoe, Mr. King. Thank you. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Holmes, that these footprints could have come from this slipper? Oh, undoubtedly. The prints lead to the door. Again, quite correct. Well, Mr. King? I must have stepped in it, I guess, when I went to the door. Really? Wasn't it more likely that you took out the pane of the window from the outside to make it look like a burglary and returned inside to do the murder? Paul couldn't possibly have done such a crime. That's what we shall see. Uh, one moment, Inspector. I'll have to ask you please not to interfere in this, Mr. Holmes. I merely wish to point out that the footprints do not stop at the door. Mr. King's footprints lead to a heap of earth over there. Why did you bury these garments, and to whom do they belong? Mrs. Blackburn, I trust uh, that you can furnish me the information that Mr. King will not. Mrs. Blackburn had nothing to do with it. Mrs. Blackburn, Mr. King, will you please follow me? I am forced to take you both to London with me, I'm afraid. You have indeed reconstructed the case correctly, Inspector. My compliments on your perspicacity. And now perhaps Mrs. Blackburn will be good enough to tell you what really happened. I... Well, I had just turned the lights off when... Where's Peter? I've no idea. I'm going down. I want to come too. Hurry. We've got things to do. What is all this? 
Ellen, go to your room. Peter, what happened? He came up from behind me. Fortunately, I had the hammer in my hand. The hammer? Then what are you doing with that gun? I'll call the police. No! But the man is dead. Who is he? You... You must help me. Well, what do you expect me to do? First, we must get him undressed. What are you in Ellen, get out of here, please! Get out! Blackburn shot away the man's face to make the police think it was him. He then put his serpent ring on the finger, but was unable to get his wedding ring off. Mr. King then buried the clothes, which accounts for his footprints. Peter wanted to be declared dead officially. He wanted us to begin a new life. I am not yet convinced of the fact that the deceased is not Peter Blackburn. No. Look at this man's hand. Dark, tan skin. Calluses all over the fingers and the palms of the hand. The hand of a man who's done considerable manual labor. This could not possibly be Peter Blackburn. This is senseless, Ellen. Peter can't stay hidden away forever. Come on, Inspector. There's a secret room over here. Peter. Open up. Peter. Peter, it's me, Ellen. tried to write the name of his murderer on the top of the table, obviously with his wedding ring, M-O-R. Did that convey anything to you, Inspector? M-O-R. Many words begin with M-O-R. Morgue, morning, or Moriarty. You told us that Moriarty has an alibi. My dear Inspector, Blackburn had a secret. Moriarty wanted it, and when he'd gotten it, he had him murdered. Do you know the secret, Holmes? Naturally, I read the Times. Well, Charles? Samuels? No, Blackburn. He had already taken care of Samuels for us. I always maintained that Samuels would come to a bad end. Even in Egypt, he was a troublemaker. And if anybody is stupid enough to ask for 40%, well, Charles, I also maintain greed will get you nowhere. You follow me, Charles? Naturally, Professor. Thank you. 
I say, I'm awfully sorry, but my foot slipped the clutch. Just take a look at what you've done to my car. Now, you control yourself. There isn't much damage. Oh, no. What's this all about? This stupid idiot bumps smacked into my car. How dare you? You mind your language. Oh. Your licenses, please. Hmm. That's right, officer. Take his name. He'll have to take care of the damages. Oh, I say. Are you free? Yes, sir. Will you please take me to Park Lane Road? Uh. Move your cars, please. Thank you for your kindness, Constable. You've been most understanding. My keys! My keys are gone! Really? Well, I'll help you find them, dear fellow. <laughs> Wait over there until I return. Off with the
Ah. Aha. You don't expect to find them under there, do you? Unless you stole them, they've got to be what somewhere. Is, uh, what will I do with your keys? <laughs> for today. You told me you always find something of import in it. Today it contains something very special. Really? What? Look for yourself. Ah, the famous necklace. Precisely. The necklace and the casket. That's why Peter Blackburn was murdered. You solved the case, Holmes, right under the noses of the police. It isn't solved yet. I'm simply getting the evidence together to hang Moriarty. Gentlemen, I am highly disappointed. I am not at all impressed. This blatant lack of discipline in our midst could make me undertake measures that you would find most regrettable. We weren't given orders to guard the necklace. I require personal initiative. Do you realize the consequences of failure in this organization? Charles. Yes, Professor. Come in here. Come in, I say. Shut the door. Where have you been? I had a slight accident. An old lady drove right into me. But there is much damage. Where's the car? I came by cab so I wouldn't be late. I see. Thought you said there was very little damage. Uh, yes, only I couldn't find the keys afterwards. You traitor. You're the fool to whom we owe our failure. They set a trap for you and you fell right into it. Who, Professor? Sherlock Holmes. You're mistaken. That idiot in the Daimler. That wasn't Sherlock Holmes. The man driving the Daimler was his friend Watson. And meanwhile, Holmes stole the keys to the car. And then came here. Would you like to become acquainted with this little plaything, Charles? I can only hope that Holmes has gathered enough evidence to hang you for Blackburn's murder, Charles. That's all you deserve. Gentlemen, I trust you are sufficiently intelligent that it's not necessary to convince you that the necklace must be recovered with the utmost speed. You have exactly 48 hours. I believe I shall turn over the supervision of this mission to one of our most far-sighted and reliable collaborators. Inform the doctor immediately. I take it that you are now convinced, Inspector, that Professor Moriarty's activities are not entirely legitimate. It's incredible. A world-famous authority on archaeology. A common thief. And a murderer. Precisely. Yes? Oh, Professor Moriarty. This is indeed a pleasant surprise. Mr. Holmes doesn't seem as pleased as yourself, Inspector. Do you know this gentleman? Yes, we have already had the pleasure. Am I welcome to join you? Please do. We met in court, as I recall, the Perry case. Perry? Perry? Yes, quite so. The name escaped me for a minute. A burglary case, wasn't it? Yes, Perry stole some jewelry in Milan. Of course, you didn't know anything about it. Naturally not, Mr. Holmes. And the jury was quite convinced at the time, as you will recall. And this necklace, has it also been stolen? Yes, it has. I must confess that this is the very reason for my visit here today, Inspector. 
That is the missing Cleopatra necklace in its original casket. It disappeared over six years ago during our excavations in Egypt. <laughs> uh, where was it located? In your study, Professor. My study. Naturally, you don't know anything about that either, in spite of the fact that your men stole it for you and murdered Peter Blackburn in the bargain. Inspector, I will not permit anyone to insult me in this crass fashion. Unfortunately for you, Professor, Mr. Holmes can prove his statement. That casket was found in your study in a mummy case. <laughs> you know, Inspector, this gentleman reads too many detective stories. Sherlock Holmes has tried to slander me on several occasions, but his accusations have always been a fiction. I would be delighted if he would search for this mummy case in my study. I assure you, there is none. Do feel free to investigate, Inspector. In any event, I'm pleased these priceless jewels are in the right hands. No doubt you will turn it over to the Egyptian government. The Egyptians will be informed of its recovery, Professor. As soon as we have their consent, the necklace will be sold, together with some recent archaeological discoveries at auction. Then its destiny will be fulfilled. Uh, just one moment, Professor. It may be slightly more difficult to remove this casket from Scotland Yard than from a somewhat poorly guarded mummy case. I could cause you very great difficulties had I a mind to. Difficulties you would not forget. Out of respect for Scotland Yard, I shall forego doing so. Good day, gentlemen. Ah, a highly successful little interview. Hmm? I confess I won't sleep until I've disposed of this damn necklace, Holmes. And of course, you're going to receive your 10% of the price of sale as the finder's reward later. Just be patient. Patient for what, Inspector? You think it's going to be stolen again? No, no, nobody could manage to steal it from here. I certainly hope you're right. And I personally will carry the box under heavy police protection and bring it to the auction block. Splendid, Inspector. And if you don't have faith in me, Holmes, I'd be happy to have you along with me. It's your affair, Inspector. I'm not the police. And may I inquire what you are now planning? All in good time, Inspector. All in good time. Hmm. Next Monday, the Cleopatra necklace is to be sold at auction property of the Egyptian government, this necklace is one of the most valued archaeological discoveries of all time. The sale is a great event. How much do you suppose it'll bring? It doesn't matter now. I don't want anything more to do with it. But Ellen, Holmes asked us both to stop in at the auction. Oh, Paul, must we? You know how much he helped us after all. He must have his reasons. Ellen, come here. We'll soon be far away from here. There'll be nothing to remind us of this nightmare. Archaeologist deigns to meet the criminologist for a secret meeting of the two great minds. You are doubtless aware the necklace of Cleopatra comes up for auction tomorrow at Mosley's rooms. It should bring a very high figure. It is bound to. to. Tell the truth, Mr. Holmes, I didn't feel absolutely sure you would acknowledge my invitation. My dear professor, how could I possibly forego the, shall we say, pleasure of your company? Feelings entirely mutual, dear Mr. Holmes. Frankly, I do regret you have such an opinion of me. Oh, but I have nothing against you personally, Professor. On the contrary, the fertility of your imagination greatly impresses me. This afternoon, for instance, at Scotland Yard, a masterly performance. Masterly. And now, Professor? I shouldn't be surprised if you were a natural mind reader, Holmes. As it happens, I was thinking of making you a proposal. Indeed. Would you like to sit down? Thank you. A partnership, Mr. Holmes. A partnership, Professor? Let's say 6,000 pounds per annum and naturally a share of the profits. In my opinion, murder is not profitable. You underestimate me, Holmes. We are both men of logic and we possess extraordinary intellect. 
But we are both wasting our forces warring against each other. And if I may say so, dear Holmes, this is illogical. We should unite our talents and forces. Such a partnership would be sure to succeed. No doubt it would, Professor. Then I may assume you accept? Uh, the picture you paint is a very alluring one. There's only one answer that I can give. Much as I regret it, I shall have to continue to waste my energies. I have only one ambition at present. To see you hanged. A regrettable decision indeed, Mr. Holmes. Does this belong to you? It has a somewhat familiar look. It's one of my favorite playthings. But it has one small defect. It slips once in a while. Accidents will happen, Professor. In any case, you lose, Mr. Holmes. Your move, Professor. Uh, well, I hope it won't get us into trouble with the police, Holmes. Using those whistles, uh, good idea, though. Elementary, my dear Watson. Observation. You might as well bring along a policeman. I must have at least two men. That's hey, the problem. Look at that, will you? Hey, come out of the train! Oh. 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 Finished with him yet. I'll leave him alone, Mike. Not worth it, is he? All right. If you say so. It goes against me. How about a beer, eh? Huh? Wait, was one whiskey, one beer. Where did you learn that? I spent 15 years with a knife thrower. He used to pin his wife down every night, on the stage, of course. <laughs> when he happened to slip <laughs> once. Nice little toy, Doctor. Comes in handy from time to time. Where'd you meet this death thrower? Tell us. In a circus? Not exactly. We used to share a room, as a matter of fact. Bars in front of the window. Lovely view, though. Over the moors. You were in Dartmoor? Oh, I didn't say that, did I? Good health. What are you up to now? That's my business, chum. Of this fellow. Now? Oh? Well, come to think of it, I don't think much of you either. I wouldn't have thrown one of these pretty little things if it had been to save your lovely pies. 
Where'd you dig them up, anyway? Ladies' addresses? <laughs> well, thanks for the beer. Just a minute. What's your name? What's your game, mister? All right, all right, boys. Hold What's the idea? papers from Dartmoor. What were you sentenced for? It's none of your business. Uh-huh. Most interesting. Here with Lawrence Alexander Kopernik, originally sentenced for burglary, is to report weekly at police headquarters to his parole officer. All right, now you know. Police! will take this route. I have the entire circuit under heavy guard. Holmes thought it advisable. He believes the necklace will be snatched before it gets to Mosley's. It seems rather far-fetched to imagine anyone trying to steal a package from a sealed police van right in broad daylight. In any event, I will be in the van with two of my men. Yes, we'll leave in exactly 15 minutes. Right you are, Inspector. Ah, uh home. -huh. Hey! 
And here is a vase, 1200 BC, exceptionally well preserved, bidding to start at a thousand pounds. Do I hear 1100? Ah, uh, 1100. 1200. Do I hear 1300? 1300. Will anyone offer 1400? Do I hear 1400? Going at 1300? 1300. Going, going, gone. Sold to the gentleman in the center. <coughs> Head of a tomb statue, the only known one of its kind. What am I bid? Head of King Amenhotep II, do I hear any bids? Ladies and gentlemen, I regret to inform you that the Cleopatra necklace, which was to have gone on sale today, has been withdrawn from the auction as it is not available it's to us. It's been withdrawn? What's the meaning of this? I don't understand why it is that the most valuable things always vanish. 1,300. Do I hear 14? Does anyone bid 1,400? Going at 1,300. At 1,300. Not bidding, Professor. Going, going, Have all going. the objects I'm interested in. Are you quite sure? To the lady in the rear. Unless you should happen to be aware of something which might tempt me. Far be it from me to give any suggestions to an expert such as yourself. I understand you believe in buying as little as possible. That's what is most satisfying. Somehow many of the best objects seem to find their way into my private collection. What am I offering? Not always, me? Professor. Oh, excuse me, is there a Mr. Holmes here? Yes. Would you please step into the office? Thank you. What am I bid for this unique example of early Egyptian pottery? Ladies and gentlemen, do I hear any bids? 900 pounds. 900 pounds. Do I hear 1,000? 1,000. Do I hear 1,100? Yes. And give the information immediately to the commissioner. Oh, Mr. Holmes. Have you heard about what occurred? I warned you, Inspector. No doubt it will interest you to learn that the men who were involved in the theft have been apprehended. Yes, I know. How could you know that? Why do you suppose that the police were in the right place at the right time, Inspector? My friend Dr. Watson was good enough to notify Scotland Yard. <sighs> it disappeared under my very eyes. This is no joking matter. I wonder where it can be. On its way here by post. Thank you. There you are. Thank you. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll get back to the auction. Uh. Do I hear 2100? For 2,000 pounds, going, going, gone. Excuse me. Would you please announce that the Cleopatra necklace has arrived? It can be reinstated in today's auction. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to announce that contrary to prior withdrawal, one of the most exceptional of all archaeological finds will be on sale today. <gasps> the Cleopatra <gasps> Nix. <gasps> this our good fortune that it was restored to the collection in time for auctioning. The necklace is in perfect condition and is being offered for sale in the diamond encrusted jewel case in which it was discovered. I would like to inquire about what proof exists as to the authenticity of the Cleopatra necklace. With us today is one of the most noted archaeological experts in the world, Professor Moriarty. Would you be good enough to give us your opinion on this necklace?
Yes. This is indeed the necklace attributed to Cleopatra. May I extend our appreciation? I am asked to offer this necklace for 100,000 pounds. May I call for a bid of 110, please? Do I hear an offer of 110? 110,000! 120! 120,000! Do I hear 130? 130,000 pounds! 140! 140,000 pounds! Who finally purchased the necklace? A collector from Texas. Oh, I fear I won't be able to breathe until it's out of the country. Mm. Uh, now perhaps you'll tell me what I've got these roses for. Oh, roses? Oh yes, the roses. My dear Watson, you're a married man. Don't be so unromantic. Oh, oh, um, oh, Mrs. Blackburn, may I uh, offer you our felicitation? Oh. Oh, and our warm wishes for your future happiness. Thank you. It's very kind of you. Oh, uh, thank you. Frankly, Mr. Holmes, we're wondering why you insisted on our coming here. Mrs. Blackburn, you have just seen the disposal of something that has caused you the greatest anguish. I asked you both to come here to see for yourselves, but there's still some truth in the old saying, all's well that ends well. Thank you. Ah, Professor. Mm, the great master detective in police custody. May I? With pleasure. Here's a little toy which I think will interest you very much indeed, Inspector. Watch it. You should treat my little toy with more care, after all. It's an art object. Whiskey in the handle of a walking stick. I always find it helps to take a small drink when it's chilly in London, Mr. Holmes. Thank you, I never drink before six. But the inspector like one. No, never on duty. Mm, Dr. Watson. No, thanks. And I am not in the least chilly today. What a shame. Frankly, it's sad to see England lose such a magnificent piece. Anything more I can do for you? No, thank you, Professor. But we shall need you very soon. To examine an object of archaeological interest, I presume, Mr. Holmes. Not exactly. Scotland Yard has recently arrested a gang of thieves who specialize in art objects. Oh, interesting. Very. The trial will be interesting, too. Especially for you, Professor. I feel sure that you will take a prominent part in the proceedings. You can always rely on my goodwill, Inspector, insofar as my schedule permits. Uh, good day, gentlemen. As it happens, I'm going in that direction myself. Much obliged. My pleasure. Oh, I say, isn't that Professor Moriarty? Yes, and he's with the buyer from Texas. Well, at least the necklace is safe now. Don't underestimate Moriarty, Watson. Come along, we've work to do. <laughs> <laughs> 